Hello and welcome to this Total War Rome 2 Empire Divided Let's Play. For this video we'll be taking control of Gallic Rome and leading the armies of Emperor Gaius Tetricus, one of the five famous leaders of the Crisis of the 3rd century. We're also going to be taking a more in-depth look at the new power and politics system that is available as a free update from the launch of Empire Divided on the 30th November. So far in this campaign I've managed to expand my Gallic Empire south and Tetricus has finally taken control of Rome. With the capital in my hands, it's time to make a start on my political goals for the Empire, reinstating the Republic and bringing Rome back into the hands of the people. Now let's jump right into the gameplay and get those plans into motion. Commander. As you can see, most of Italy is under my control, and Tetricus has a full complement of 20 units under his command. If we take a look at the strategic overview map, you can see that I have quite a lot of Western Europe under my control. My position is made even stronger by client states in Hispania Citeria to the southwest and Britannia to the north. I do have threats to the south, however, in Aurelian's Rome and the Roman pretenders that I clawed the capital back from. Opening up the political party affiliation map, however, shows that I might have threats to my empire that are a little bit closer to home. This orange section is the House of Tetricus, which is my political party. In the yellow, we have the Proletarii Collegium. In blue, the Patricii Council. And in green, the newly conquered lands of Latium support the Viri Egregii. If I open up the politics panel of my faction window, we can see the three parties' various policies, leaders, loyalty, and most importantly, the influence they have on the Senate. Our biggest threat by far are the Patricii Council, with 28% of the Senate listening to their anti-barbarian propaganda. What's more, their loyalty is quite low compared to those other parties, due to our empire's dealings with the Northmen and their political trait of hates barbarians. If we open up the tech tree, we can see that in the governance tree, I'm currently researching approved administration. Once that's complete, we can move on to the tech I need the most at the moment, Reinstituted Republic. This will give a plus 15 loyalty for all political parties in my empire, whilst my faction is a republic, and it'll also help those pesky bandits that can pop up in Empire Divided. So we're in a good position, let's open up the faction summary window, and finally give power back to the people of Rome. Clicking on the government type button will open up this window, which will show us all the reforms that we have available to us. As a Roman faction, we only have the option to form either an empire or a republic. As we can see here, the republic government type will improve our research speed and public order, but also promote more instability between political parties. On top of that, in the bottom right we can see that transitioning between two structures of government will come with a great financial cost and also provide massive drops to our party loyalty and public order across faction lands. Well, there's no going back now, Gallic Rome is a republic. If we jump back into the politics window, we can see that our competitors in the Patriciae Council are now very unhappy with us, and they've reached a point where they could secede and form their own faction. This would definitely halt the spread of our forces for a while, but removing them from the Senate would only further cement our power over Gallic Rome. Before we move on, let's make sure our friends in the Proletarii Collegium don't get any ideas either by securing their loyalty. Good, a success. Let's pop their loyalty back up to 10, which should stop them getting too upset about our political reforms for a while. On to our second turn now, and just as we feared, those fools from the Patriciae Council have seceded and started their own empire. We'll see how long that lasts. If we open up the overview map, we can see that the chunk of land that they had under their control is now completely theirs, and they've taken some of my forces with them as well. It looks like Mediolanum will be their new base of operations. We're going to have to wipe out our former forces and take it back for the true Gallic Romans. If we open up the politics window again, we can see that the removal of the council has left us as an absolute power in the Senate, with a massive 76% of the senators from our party. Also, Due to the recent secession we suffered, we'll now be protected from this happening again for the next 10 turns. Let's be thankful it wasn't a full-blown civil war. Well, enough politics for now. It's time to shed the blood of these pretenders. Our loyal force that was stationed in Batavium were forced out during the secession. Let's move them back into the town and put an iron heel to those Patriciae soldiers. A simple battle for our superior forces. 
Oh, right in the face. Ah, it looks like we've unlocked a new tradition for this army. At your command. Let's establish them as engineering experts. They've got a lot of settlements to besiege over the next few months. Now that that's taken care of, we can start moving our main force north as well. Let's grab Tetricus and move him up to Aretium. We're going to be taking Genua next turn, so we'll get him nice and close. Ready for battle. Ready for further orders. Looks like one of the decisions that I made earlier in my campaign has resulted in this specific Empire Divided event occurring. There's plenty of great insight into the famous characters that you'll be playing as during your campaigns in Empire Divided, and this one has granted me a point of zeal for Gaius Tetricus. Oh dear. Uh, with all my attention focused in the north, I've left my southern borders wide open to Aurelian's Roman forces. We're going to have to take some action quickly, or we'll find ourselves completely surrounded by enemies. But it's alright, I've got a plan. If we open the faction window again, we can see the Egregia leader is currently serving as a statesman. But we can also briefly mention that a new political party is formed in the Patriciais vacancy. But I'm not going to embarrass everyone by attempting to pronounce their name. Now because this character is currently sat vacant, we can call him into service by raising a new force. Each candidate will be tied to certain political parties, but let's go for the head honcho Tiberius Murius Crassipus. Great name. There's a couple of options we can choose from when selecting his bodyguard unit, but I'm going to grab the Gallic Imperial Bodyguards, as he's going to be defending the streets of our settlement. Ready for orders. Uh, let's give him some upgrades as well, because he's going to need it. Now we won't have time to raise new forces, so we're going to have to recruit some mercenaries. Let's grab a unit of gladiators, uh, some cavalry, and a few skirmishes too. Now we do have a nice steady income, but mercenary units are expensive. We may need to hire even more if Aurelian has a second army hiding in the south of Italy. If we open up the faction window and head to the characters tab, we can see that Tiberius is in his flashy new armour. One of our options is to give him a promotion to the rank of Military Tribune. This increases the taxes we collect from his local province, increases the loyalty of his political party, and decreases the upkeep for all land units under his control. Hopefully, that's enough to repel any forces from entering our southern provinces. Now let's station Tiberius in Benevitum and shift our focus to the secessionists to the north. Ready for battle. To it, men. I'm going to hire a few more mercenaries for my northeastern force to make sure they're ready for the siege of Mediolanum. Just a few new units to bolster their ranks. We'll upgrade their equipment as best as we can as well. Now I'm going to move over to Gaius Tetricus and march his forces to Genua. This should be an easy battle. Oh, that's got to hurt. But, one more province reclaimed for the true republic. Ready for Ready for orders. Ah, and it looks like a new military tradition to pick for as well. I think I'll take unrelenting force. Campaign movement range is always handy. Well, it's next stop Mediolanum. It looks like those soldiers that I spent all my money on earlier in my campaign are sitting pretty comfortably. They also have a 10 unit strong garrison to back them up as well. Let's end the turn and then we can start marching towards them. 
Let's all raise a glass to Tiberius. His ragtag group of mercenaries has managed to fight off the invading forces of Aurelian. They suffered pretty heavy losses, but a win is a win, and Benevitum remains under our control. One final look at our faction window shows that his recent victory has improved our political relations as well. Two birds of one stone. Well, time waits for no man. It's time to march on the secessionist capital and take it back for Gallic Rome. At your command. I'm going to move my second legion into reinforcement range. Perfect. Now let's select Gaius Tetricus and march my forces to Mediolanum. Besieging the settlement. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll leave you with some cinematic shots of my attack on Mediolanum. And remember, the Empire Divided DLC for Total War Rome 2 will be available on the 30th of November 2017. Want to find out more? Check out the links in the description below.